This is going to be a glorious night. I know that 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 this is my night. <laughs> Exodus 15. Verse 26, Exodus 15, verse 26. Tonight we are talking about victory over sickness and disease. And said, If thou wilt hearken, Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And we do that which is right in his sight. And we give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. When we were younger, there's a song, when we were younger, there's a song we used to sing. And I'm going to encourage some of you to sing it tonight. He says, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, they all belong to Jesus. How many of you know this song? All right. Now, those of you who are young, only those who are young, the, the elders, you can sit down and sing your own singing. I know some of you, it's a long time, you, talk, you touch your toes last. So if you can't touch the toes, just point to it. And say, my head, my soul, my knees, my toes, my head, my soul, my knees, my toes, my head, my soul, my knees, my toes, they all belong. To Jesus, my head, my soldier, my knees, my toes, my head, my soldier, my knees, my toes, my head, my soldier, my knees, my toes, they all belong to Jesus. Now you're going to sing it one more time. And by the time you may be okay, thank you, Lord. He wants you to sing it three times. And by the time you finish the third time, something will happen in your body. Are you ready? Three, go. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, they all belong to Jesus. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes. My shoulder, my knees, my toes, they all belong to Jesus. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, they all belong.
before you leave here today, the doctor's report concerning you will be turned completely. Please be seated. The reason for singing that song, which is a song of victory, is to let you know that God is deeply interested in your body. Not your soul and spirit alone. There are people who will teach you that all that God is concerned about is your soul and spirit. That your body doesn't count. You can do whatever you like with your body. Now that's a lie of the devil. And I will show it to you very quickly now. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, the Bible says that God wants your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1 says you are to present your body a living sacrifice. Your body. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. He didn't say you are to present your spirit. He didn't say you are to present your soul. He said you are to present your body. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. First Corinthians 6, verse 19. says, what? Know ye not that your body, your body, is the temple of the Holy Ghost? God is keenly interested in your body. The devil rejoices when he hears that you can do whatever you like with your body. God doesn't care. That is only interested in your soul and spirit. The devil says, fine. I won't kill you because if I kill you, your soul and spirit will go to God. And since you say your body does not belong to God, I will torture that body. The reason why many Christians are sick today is that they just have not realized that the body of a child of God is a property of the Most High God. And the moment you realize that, you will be able to tell the devil, <laughs> you can't mess with my body because it belongs to Jesus. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, all the way belong to Jesus. Of course, this brings upon us the responsibility that this body belongs to Jesus. You have to be careful how you handle it. You have to be careful the kind of junk food you want to put into it. This body belongs to Jesus. 
You have to be careful how you use this body. It is a property of the Most High God. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost dwells in your body. And so I'm going to give you very quickly ten reasons only. There are many more. Ten reasons why I believe you will leave this place completely whole tonight. <laughs> Number one, it is God who made you. If you agree with that, say amen. He is the potter, you are the clay. Psalm 64, verse 8. Sorry, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, verse 8. He is the potter, and you are the clay. And in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 31, Genesis 1, 26 to 31, when he made you, Initially, he took a look at you and said, Very good. When God made you, he made you very good. David said, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. Excellent work. If anything goes wrong, therefore, with this body that God made, He can repair it. In Luke chapter six, verse six to ten, Luke six, verse six to ten, the Bible talked about a man with a withered hand. Something went wrong with the hand, and it began to wither. Just one word. From the one who made the hand And the hand became whole again If there's anything in your body that had withered Today it shall be restored <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 3 to 4 Jeremiah 8 3 to 4 Says there was a potter making a vessel. When an accident happened and the vessel was mad in his hand, he made a brand new one. In the name that's above every other name, you will leave this place brand new today. I don't know if I told you the testimony of one of my children abroad who gave birth to a son and for more than 20 days the son could not defecate. So the poor little thing was in pain. The doctors examined the child and they said the intestine was blocked. And that to make sure this boy will ever defecate, they had to operate on the boy. The father said, operate on a 20-something days old child. He said, no, I will go back to God. So he gathered his family together, his wife, other children, bought a big bottle of olive oil. And said, we are going to do this thing the way that the Jew would do it. They placed the child in the middle. They joined hands. He said, I know before he does anything, he will worship God. So let us worship God. And then we will see. We will pour this oil on this boy and see what happened. They started singing the first song. While they were singing the first song, they began to smell something terrible. 
and they discovered that the boy had started defecating. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if there's anyone here today that needs an operation, God will do it right here. Reason number two. Well, I am sure you are going to leave here home. Is that it can handle genetical problems too. In other words, suppose the problem is in the family line. Family line. Because long before the scientists discover that there are sicknesses that are genetical, the African elders knew it. That's why if anybody wants to marry in the olden days, you come and you say you want to marry my daughter, we say, okay, go away. Who we'll, can come back in seven days? In the seven days, we'll go and do inquiry. In the family you are coming from, has there been a leper before? Has there been a madman before? Why? Because they knew if somebody had had leprosy before in the family, sooner or later it will show up again. If anybody had been mad in the family before, another crazy man is coming. But God can handle genetical problems too. Why? He made your parents too. John chapter 1 verses 1 and 3. John 1 verses 1 and 3 say, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. By Him were all things made, including your parents. And He knew you. Even before he formed you, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5, he said, before I formed thee, I knew you. Even while you were mother, your mother's womb, I knew what was going on. So it doesn't matter where the problem started from, from your mother or your father or grandfather or even far, far, far behind. God was there when the problem started. And he can solve the problem from the foundation. Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2, Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2, made it clear to us that even before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting is God. And in any case, if, there's, if your problem, if your sickness tonight is something that runs in the family, I congratulate you because you now belong to a new family. The family of God. And in the family of God, there is no sickness. There is no disease. That is why I am sure that tonight... Even if the sickness is genetic, you will be made whole. <laughs> you remember the story of the lady who was 33 years old and was still bedwetting. You remember. She came, we wanted to pray for her, and she said, Before you pray, I need to tell you that my mother was also a bedwetter. And grandmother was also a bedwetter before mama. It ran in the family. We prayed for her when she gave her life to Jesus Christ and said, whatever problem had been in the family, she went. Came back the following morning and said, for the first time in 33 years, she woke up and the bed was dry. Every plan that God did not plant in your body, in your family line, shall be uprooted tonight in Jesus' name. Reason number three 
why I am sure God is going to heal you tonight is that he can handle cases that are beyond medicine. The Lord shared something with me not too long ago that shook me. He said, Son, I am not a doctor. I said, What? Because all along we've always talked about Dr. Jesus. Dr. Jesus said, I am not a doctor. He said, I am a healer. The doctor is a mechanic. The doctor cares, I heal. Today, the one who can heal doctors is going to heal you too. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm not a doctor. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 said, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. All flesh. Including yours. He says, is there anything too hard for me? In the name that's above every other name, your own will not be too hard for God tonight. <laughs> He's going to heal you because he has something that no doctor has. They don't give you anointing in medical school. They can teach you all about anatomy, blood, sample, this, that, but <laughs> it is not part of the curriculum in medical school to talk about anointing. And that is what happened in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. The Bible says there was a woman who had issue of blood 12 years the doctors tried and don't ever look down on doctors they are wonderful people great instruments of honor in the hand of God may God bless all doctors but when doctors fail there is a healer a healer who will never fail and that healer is here tonight is here particularly because of someone and if you are that someone let me hear you shout hallelujah <laughs> and before I proceed further let me tell you one thing that is very important there are some of us who are here tonight saying what do I need victory from sickness and disease for? I'm not sick. I pray for those of you who are not sick, you will never be sick in Jesus' name. <laughs> but do you know one thing? Many a times people think they are healthy and they don't know that sickness is already inside. It is not the day they discover that somebody has cancer, that cancer came. It has been there quietly. The devil has sneaked in, sneaked in without anybody knowing. I pray for every one of you here today with any form of sickness, even unknown to you, the healer will heal you in Jesus' name. Number four, because I want to make it brief so you can have time to really talk to him. What if the problem is as a result of my sin? Because to tell you the truth, majority of sicknesses and diseases come as a result of sin. 
Psalm 107. If you read it from verse 17 to 20, Psalm 107 from 17 to 20, it says, Fools, because of their transgressions, are afflicted. You transgress, affliction comes, and then the problem gets bigger and bigger until you begin to draw close to the gate of death. Then he said, they cried out to God in their distresses. And then he sent his word and he healed them. Suppose I am sick today because of my sickness, of my sin. Suppose I'm HIV positive today because I fornicated. Suppose my problem is as a result of my sin. Well, glory be to God. Jesus Christ is also the Savior. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew 1 21 says, His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from all their sins. First John chapter 1 verse 7. First John chapter 1 verse 7 says, His blood cleanses from all sins. So suppose today your sickness, your disease is as a result of your sin. He can forgive first and then heal. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. They brought a man, four boys brought a man to Jesus Christ. You know the story. They broke the roof. And brought him down. Definitely, it is clear to everybody they wanted this fellow healed. But what was the first thing Jesus Christ said to the young man? Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He got the sin out of the way and then brought in the healing. A woman gave a testimony. I think it is in one of our programs in America. She's a lady from Cameroon. And she was testifying and said that when she was young, she was very loose, messed around, became pregnant, aborted. In the process, she lost her womb. Everything inside became muddled up. Then she came to one of the programs, just like this one. And the word of God came that there was someone there present. Everything that had been destroyed in your stomach is being replaced. And she jumped at it and said, Amen. When she was giving a testimony, she had five children with her. From a stomach where they had already removed the womb, I decree today everything that you have lost, whatever may be the cause, shall be replaced in Jesus' name. Reason number five. Reason number five. I know that God is sovereign. Psalm 105, Psalm 115, verse 3. Psalm 115, verse 3 it says, Our God is in the heavens. He does as He pleases. If He chooses, He could heal only one person here tonight and go. Nobody can challenge Him. We said that there will be healing tonight. He can come, He can heal one or two and go. I said, Yes. You said there will be healing, and there will be healing. Like he did in John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9. John 5, verse 2 to 9. Among a multitude, he healed one fellow and left. I know he's sovereign, but he's also gracious. He's sovereign, but he's also merciful. Psalm 86, verse 15. 
Psalm 86 verse 15 says, He is full of compassion. He is gracious. He is plenty in mercy. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 to 23. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23 says, It is because of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. That you are still alive today is because of his mercy. So even if for no other reason, if it's only because of his reason, he will heal you tonight. In Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 44. Mark 1, 40 to 44. The Bible tells us, when he saw a leper, he had compassion on him. And because of that compassion, he healed him. Because of the compassion, he killed the incurable. He had compassion on him. Remember the story of the young man who came and said, Daddy, my marriage is in two weeks' time. And then we went for a blood test. And it is discovered that I am HIV positive. We have sent out invitation cards. What are we going to do? I said, son, two weeks? He said, yes. And that's more than enough time for God to perform a miracle. He said, but I sinned. I said, that's no problem. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. He will be merciful. We pray the simple prayer. You know the story. They went for another test. Went to the same hospital. HIV negative. Went to another hospital. HIV negative. Went to the top place. HIV negative. I decree tonight that because of the mercy of God, because of the mercy of God, everything wrong with you shall be put right in Jesus' name. Reason number six, where I'm sure God is going to heal you tonight, is that he still hears prayers and still answers prayers. Psalm 65 verse 2 Psalm 65 verse 2 says O thou that heareth prayers unto thee shall all flesh come. Ah, we have come to him tonight. He's going to hear somebody here. And Jeremiah 33 verse 3 Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says Call on me And I will answer you Not only will he hear Not only will he answer Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 Ephesians 3 verse 20 says He's able to do Exceeding Abundantly Above all, you can ask or think. He can hear, he will hear. He can answer, he will answer. He's able to do more than you can ask for. Your own will not be too difficult for God. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, 46 to 52. Bartimaeus cried. His cry was, Just have mercy on me. Just have mercy on me. And he heard. And because he heard, he answered. He said, Go and bring him. And when he said, What do you want? And the one said, I want my sight back. I was born blind. He sent his word. And he healed him. He will hear you tonight. He will answer you tonight. He will heal you tonight. 
Number seven. Why I'm sure he will heal you tonight. Is that whether you believe it or not, he needs you. You say, you mean God needs me? Oh. He needs you. He needs you to serve him. Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. Matthew 8, 14 and 15. Bible says, when he entered into the house of Peter, he saw the mother-in-law had fever. And mother-in-law was there, sick. And Jesus needed somebody to prepare the food. So what did he do? He touched it. The fever left. And mama got up and began to cook. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not allowing you to serve God fully shall be dealt with tonight. He needed you to witness for him. Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 45. Mark 1, 40 to 45. When he had compassion on that leper and healed him, the leper went everywhere telling others. Many of us are in Christ today because of the testimonies of somebody that we have. He heals you to become a testimony to testify for him so that more people can be added to his kingdom. He needs you to bring him glory. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. John 9, 1 to 7. They said there was a man who was born blind. And the people began to ask, why is this man born blind? Is it because of his sins or the sin of his parents? He said, no, so that God might be glorified. That God cannot be glorified in your sickness, but he can be glorified in your healing. And when he heals you tonight, the whole world will hear about it. And they will give glory to God. When he told the king that he was going to die, Isaiah 38, if you read it from verse 18 to 19, Isaiah 38, verse 18 to 19, a man of God came, told him, Ezekiah, you're a dead man. God said, put your house in order. Because you are going to die. Oh. <laughs> he said, I, knew, I know how to settle that. He turned to the Almighty God. He said, God, I think you are listening. He said, the grave can't praise you. Death cannot celebrate you. The living, only the living can praise your name. God told the prophet, go back and tell him, I give him additional 15 years. I decree tonight, your appointment with death is cancelled. As an elder sitting up here, I don't want to mention his name, but he knows himself. 1995 as some 22 years ago he came to me and said daddy I had clearly clearly God spoke to me and said put your house in order because you will soon die I laughed 
I say, is this not a joking matter, sir? I say, aha. To me, it's a joking matter. You've just given your life to Jesus. You have addicted yourself to the service of God. Everywhere I go, you want to go with me, you want to help me one way or the other, and then you say you are going to do what? Die? I say, I refuse. He's still alive today. <laughs> On behalf of every one of you, committed to serving the almighty God that I serve, no more death. I say I refuse for you to die. Uh, some of you also know Papa. Some of you know Papa. Okay, oh, well, blessed memory. I told you the story before. It came to me when he was approaching 84. He said, I met a prophet. When I was 44 years old, the prophet told me everything that will happen in my life, everything in detail, how rich I will become, uh, this and this, how many children, and so on. But he told me that when I am 84, I will die. He said, now it's two weeks to 84. I've come to you. I will, I, I want to die on this holy ground. I want you to pray for me so that the way will be clear. I asked Papa, I said, Papa, you've just given your life to leave her alone. 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 Just leave her alone, okay? Thank you. She's going to be one of the miracles of tonight. I said, Papa, are you ready to die? He said, no, not really. He said, but the prophet said, and everything the prophet said came to pass. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, since you are now ready to serve God, by the grace of God, there is a greater prophet here. Every prophecy concerning you that has to do with death and dying, in the name that's above every other name, I cancel it tonight. When Papa was just two weeks or so before 100, he came to me again and said, I've tried, I want to go now. Release me. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for the rest of your life, you won't even know sickness. Reason number eight, why I know God is going to heal you tonight, is that I know some of you have been disappointed before. You have prayed for healing and nothing happened. I have good news for you. You have been disappointed before but not today. I say not today. Why? If you read the story in John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, John 5, verse 2 to 9, the man by the pool of Bethesda had been disappointed for 38 years. Not just once. And your case is not as bad as that. When his day came, 
disappointment ended. And in the book of Psalms, Psalm 102, verse 13, Psalm 102, verse 13, the Bible says, Thou will arise and have mercy on Zion. Why? Because the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. Oh, lift your hand to the Almighty God and say, My time has come. Your time has come. I say, Your time has come. I say your time has come I say I believe your time has come I say in the mighty name of Jesus Your time has come I say whether the devil likes it or not Your time has come I say even the angels in heaven Will rejoice because your time has come Your time has come. That brings me to point number nine. Your faith might not be enough. But don't worry. We will join our faith with yours tonight. Jesus Christ said... In Matthew 18, verse 19, Matthew 18, verse 19, he said, If two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask on earth, it shall be done for them by our Father in heaven. Two, if two who agree. We are more than two here tonight. We are all going to be in agreement. When the time comes to pray, one of our prayer points is going to be God just heal everybody here. We will join our faith with yours. No matter how little your faith may be, no matter how little our own faith might be, by the time we combine all the little, little faith, mountains shall be moved here tonight. In Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. When that man who was paralyzed from neck downwards was brought to Jesus, he couldn't have been healed on his own. But four people helped him. Four people. They carried him. And I thank God for those four boys. They were determined boys. They carried him. They couldn't find way at the door. They refused to let go. We are going to tell the Almighty God. All of us, we are going to tell him tonight, we refuse to let you go, Daddy. You have to heal every one of us. Every one of us. He's going to see our faith tonight when we begin to pray one for the other. And in the mighty name of Jesus, he will honor our faith. Yeah. When people agree together, mighty miracles happen. I told you the story of one of my daughters who came and said, Daddy, pray for me. I want to be healed. I said, okay. What, what, what do you want me to pray about? What is it? He said, ah, are you the one who will do it? All I'm asking you to do is just agree with me. Agree with me. When my testimony comes, you will know. Okay. I'm, I'm, not, the, I'm not the miracle worker, it is God. So I pray. God grant the desire of her heart. Do for her what she wanted. The following week she came and said, huh? Now I can tell you. She said she had been bedwetting since she was born. 
and never been able to travel with her colleagues because if they, if they are going to spend the night, because if they spend one night outside, her secret will be out. And the, the reason she couldn't tell me is that she wasn't even sure whether God is going to answer my prayers. So her faith was small. Then we prayed together. And the merciful God healed her. That merciful God is going to heal you tonight. <laughs> Number 10. Why I'm sure God will heal you tonight. Is that whether you believe it or not, God still loves you. If you believe God loves you, wave your hand to Him. And I say, ah, okay. And the Bible says in John 15, verse 13, John 15, verse 13, greater love has no man than this. That a man gave his life for his friend. He laid down his life for his man. God loves you. He does. And I know. And when he loves someone, he sees to it that they get healed. John 11, verse 1 to 4. John 11, verse 1 to 4. When Lazarus was sick, the sister said to Jesus, they said, the one whom thou lovest is sick. They tied it around the love that he had for Lazarus. What was the answer of Jesus? He said, oh no, the sickness is not unto death. I'm going to get glory out of this. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because of the love that he has for you, even by the time you return tomorrow, you will already be singing songs of victory. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. John 3.16, For God so loved the world. Like I told you yesterday, that includes you. He loves you. Oh, I'm a terrible fellow. Oh, yes, he loves sinners. He, he just doesn't want you to die in your sin. He wants you to repent and live. He loves you so much, he gave his only begotten son. And Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans 8, 32 says, If he loves us so much that he gave his only son, begotten son, what else will he not freely give? That includes healing. I want to assure you tonight that my daddy told me he would do something here today that he has never done before. And that includes healing. I just want you to please get ready, get ready, get ready. He assured me, last night I was a bit tired after the ministration. I was still attending to people until 2 a.m. And so I wanted to sleep. But the Spirit of God said, no, 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 son, you, you can't sleep tonight because of what God wants to do tomorrow. So I came out and I began to walk through the camp. I moved from here, walked far towards the gate on our right, then turned left. And, and he kept on assuring me I will heal my son. I will heal my son. I will heal. Who is the first fellow that God will heal to? And 
That's why I want to make a passionate appeal. If you are not sure that your sins are already washed away, if you are not sure that you are born again, if we are not absolutely sure, please let's make assurance sure first before we pray. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, please come very quickly. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come very quickly. This is going to be a very special night of healing. Thank you. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. Ask Him to have mercy on you. Ask Him to save your soul. Ask Him to forgive all your sins. Ask Him to give you a brand new beginning. Cry unto Him. And the rest of us, shall we please stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them that the one who saved our own souls will save their souls also. Pray for them. Pray that God will heal them, that will save their souls, that he will forgive all their sins, that he will wash them clean with his precious blood. Pray for them now. Pray for them, every one of them, that God will have mercy on them and give them a brand new beginning in Jesus Christ. Pray for their salvation. Let's intercede for them for another one minute. Pray that the Almighty God will save their souls. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to bless your holy name for your word. And thank you very much for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. You promised, O Lord, that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive them. Let your blood wipe away their sins. Save their souls tonight. And write their names in the book of life. And please, Lord God Almighty, from this moment onward, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, I want you to write down the following prayer points that we can pray together first before I pray for you. Number one, Father, thank you for loving me. Father, thank you for loving me. Number two, Almighty Healer, Prove yourself in my life tonight. Almighty healer, prove yourself in my life tonight. Number three, Father, just have mercy on me. Just have mercy on me. 
Number four. Father, my body is yours. Every plant you have not planted in this body, uproot it tonight. My body is yours. For every stranger in this body, every plant you have not planted, every jam, every virus, every sickness, every disease that you have not planted in this body, uproot it tonight. Number five. Father, whatever needs to be repaired in my body, repair it tonight. Whatever cannot be repaired, replace it tonight. Whatever can be repaired, repair it. Whatever cannot be repaired, replace it tonight. Number six. Father, I am in total agreement with all my neighbors here tonight. Heal them all. I'm in total agreement with all my neighbors here tonight. Father, heal them all. And then number seven. Give tonight, Father, brand new wombs, brand new brains, brand new eyes, brand new kidneys. And other brand new organs. We have just about 10 minutes to pray. And the altar is open. If you want, you can sit down to pray. God will answer you. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to lie down, you can lie down. But for the 10 minutes that we have, cry to the Almighty God with all your heart. And then I will pray with you and we'll have cause to glorify God. So just go ahead and begin to cry unto him tonight. Father, thank you for loving me. Almighty healer, prove yourself in my life tonight. Just have mercy on me. Just have mercy on me. My body is yours, Lord. Every plant that you have not planted in this body, uproot it, Lord. Repair what can be repaired. What cannot be repaired, uproot it, Lord. I mean, replace it, Lord. Replace it, Lord. And I'm in agreement with all my neighbors. Lord, total agreement. Heal them all. Give us brand new, brand new wombs, brand new brains, brand new eyes, brand new legs, brand new arms, brand new kidneys, brand new hearts, brand new organs tonight. Thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will answer your prayers today. He will be merciful unto you. 
Every plant he has not planted in your system shall be uprooted right now. Whatever needs to be repaired in your body, he will repair it right now. Whatever cannot be repaired, he will replace it right now. You will not be disappointed tonight. All of you in need of something new. New womb, new eyes, new brain, new legs, new blood system. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. Before the sun rises, you will be singing for victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Now, don't go away yet. We still need just five minutes more. We want the band to begin to play. And I want you to dance back to your seat. As you are dancing back to your seat, I want you to check yourself and see what things you were not able to do before that you can do now. And then I will tell you what next we are going to do. Within the next five minutes, I will release you. But let's do just what I've said. Band, let's have some danceable music. Dance back to your seat. Check your bodies as you go. And then I will tell you what to do next. Very quickly. I will sing hallelujah. From this moment on, that my God has taken away from you today, you will never see them again. The energy you need, the health, the strength to serve God will now be yours permanently. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me hear somebody shout the biggest hallelujah. God bless you.